Hi everybody, I'm Jim Stavridis, the Dean at the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy, and I'm here with one of our most stellar graduates and a very close friend, uh, Farah Pandit. It's delightful to have her here because she brings such an extraordinary kind of Fletcher background. Um, after working for uh, many years on the National Security Council staff, uh, she then became the special representative to Muslim communities globally, uh, was sworn in to do that by Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, uh, was in that position for a considerable period of time, and, and wrestled with the issues that I think we're going to talk about, which is uh, violent extremism and how we can approach that. But let me begin by saying welcome and thanks for doing Thank this chat. It's such a delight to be back at Fletcher. Indeed. When did you graduate? I graduated in 95, wow. uh, and uh, much has changed in the world in yeah. some ways, but in others, no. But walking the halls of Fletcher is always wonderful. Yeah. Uh, the vibrancy of mm -hmm. the international students continues to, yeah. uh, to be strong, and um, I think back to the classes I took here mm -hmm. in terms of uh, whetting my appetite in, mm -hmm. in security studies. And what would you say were the top one or two classes you took or professors you encountered or things that you learned? that helped you have such an extraordinary career, National Security Council at the highest levels of policy in Washington, a global representative, what uh, specifically from Fletcher ignited that in you, Farah? You know, I think everybody has this um, expectation when they come to, to graduate school that they're going to study a particular thing. And for me, I thought I was going to study development because mm -hmm. I worked at USAID. And when I got here and looked at the course catalog, there was so much that mm -hmm. jumped out at me. Mm -hmm. Many, of course, in the development field, mm -hmm. but international security studies was a field that just mm -hmm. popped off the page. And as I began to uh, unpack what that meant, mm -hmm. I didn't quite know what it meant mm -hmm. at the time. I took classes with uh, Dick Schultz, yeah. of course, yeah. uh, and I began to learn uh, all the things that, that really are the, the basics mm -hmm. for, for this field. And, as I developed my interest in the Middle East mm -hmm. and in the insurgency uh, in, in northern India uh, between India and Pakistan, uh, I began to get really interested in the field of extremism. Mm -hmm. How are people getting mm -hmm. recruited? And it was because of the professors here at Fletcher, mm -hmm. uh, Dick Schultz, uh, Sugata Bose at the mm -hmm. time, uh, certainly Leila Fawaz and Andy Hess, mm -hmm. all began to help me define and mm -hmm. polish my interest in all of this. And it was. In fact, uh, I don't know if you know this, but it was because the Security Studies program gave me two grants mm. to go to Kashmir in the mm. summer between my mm. first and my second year at Fletcher mm. to do first-hand research with mm. extremists mm -hmm. that I began to understand why people are interested in a violent ideology. Mm -hmm. And let me follow that thread for a little bit. So you're uh, presumably interviewing um, insurgents, violent extremists. Did you ever fear for your personal safety doing that? And what precautions did you take? So this is the summer of 1994 right. uh, that I called my James Bond summer. And looking back on it, I think I was a little bit naive about the security threat that I faced. Uh, I did do some things, like mm -hmm. I didn't tell anybody that I was doing this. Mm -hmm. I went to Kashmir uh, saying that I was visiting family. I was visiting family, mm -hmm. but in fact, I was also interviewing um, yeah, militants. Yeah. Uh, so it was, it, that was a little bit mm -hmm. um, complex. But I also think that I didn't understand the scope mm -hmm. uh, of the impact of yeah. when you are one-on-one -on -one with yeah. somebody. Uh, I didn't fear for my safety in those interviews, mm -hmm. but looking back on it, I think it was a little bit foolhardy to, yeah. to do. Yeah, I, uh, I can't resist, uh, as we speak here to the Fletcher community, just saying it's always a balance between yes doing that incredibly important first-person research in the field and ensuring your personal safety. And we work very hard at that here yes. at the school now with a lot of mechanisms in place that didn't exist 20 years ago when you were a student or 30 years ago <laughs> when I was a student. But I like the idea of a James Bond summer. That's very cool. Um, so how did you get hired to the National Security Council staff? I had been working. I went back into government uh, mm -hmm. after 9-11. Mm -hmm. uh, when I graduated from Fletcher, I was here in the Boston area working in the private sector, but I felt called. Good uh, for you. And when I went back into government, I had an opportunity to go back to USAID. Mm -hmm. And in that role, went to Kabul, and was in Kabul for a few months, sure. and was doing some work. Uh, when I got back, they were beginning to look, the NSC was beginning mm -hmm. to look at what we called Muslim outreach at the time. Sure. There was nobody who was a point person all day, every day, working on this. 
and I feel very honored and, and privileged to have had the chance to interview with Secretary, um, well, at the time she was the National Security Advisor, Rice. Mm -hmm. I, it, it's funny, you look back on this and you think how things happen. I didn't know it was going to lead to something else, yeah. but, um, but that's how I, I came on yeah. board at the yeah. NSC. Well, and what an extraordinary position to have held as special representative. Talk a little about what that was like, and I know you reported to Secretary Clinton, your this, travels. This was a, a really um, unique moment mm -hmm. uh, in my career, but more importantly, as our country was beginning to think about what we call the war of ideas, or what is actually happening that is moving young, that is moving young people along a conveyor belt, if mm -hmm. you will, sure. towards violence. Sure. Uh, and we had began uh, to think about that in the Bush administration and certainly the national security strategy of 2006 mm -hmm. laid out mm -hmm. what we call countering violent extremism, that right. ideological piece. Mm -hmm. um, and we had experimented in Europe with organic local solutions mm -hmm. that we could see were actually the beginnings mm -hmm. uh, of what we now understand to be what we have to do at scale mm -hmm. uh, globally. And Hillary Clinton, as the new Secretary of State, was very interested in what we had learned mm -hmm. in Europe. Mm -hmm. And she asked us to expand that. So mm -hmm. what she said to me I is, see. do what you did in Europe, but do it around the world. And sure. in the job as special representative, uh, I traveled to nearly 100 countries, yeah, sure. but specifically talking to Muslim youth and yeah. asking them about yeah. Uh, how they feel, what is actually happening, and what's taking place, and what we learned from that yeah. was that there was a crisis of identity happening with young Muslims mm -hmm. all over the world in a post-9-11 yeah, world. Sure. We also learned as the United States is that our greatest strength mm -hmm. was not going to be certainly to have some sort of um, winning hearts and minds strategy, mm -hmm. but rather listening to what young people had to say at the grassroots and scaling up their ideas mm. on how to prevent the appeal mm. uh, of the ideology. It's fabulous. And, and of course now you've poured all of that experience uh, into writing a book, which will be coming out uh, late this year, early next year, yes. I'm told, um, which will focus on this. How's it been writing a book and taking so much of your life's work and pouring it into a manuscript? It's been a, a really interesting journey for me. Uh, I had a chance to go back and really review uh, all of the countries that I had visited and, yeah. and uh, stories that pop off the page, I hope for readers, will be about these very personal things that happened. Uh, not, it is not a memoir, it is about mm -hmm. the stories of Muslims and how they have been uh, reacting to the growth of an us and them ideology that's happening around the world. So that's been interesting because you can see you know, the, the journey sure. that way. The second is really, it, I believe that the solutions mm -hmm. are affordable and they are available. Mm -hmm. So the mm -hmm. first half of the book mm -hmm. is really to describe the trends the that I've seen globally yeah. and the second half of the book is what are we going to do about it? Yeah, what does government need to do? Fabulous private sector need to do and yeah. regular citizens need to do. I think that's fabulous. So many books are helpful and useful, but they stop short of providing solutions. Mm -hmm. One that jumps to my mind that I admire a lot and I recommend to people is Joby Warwick's book, uh, Black Flags, The Rise of ISIS, uh, which is a terrific work, won the Pulitzer Prize, but it's almost a book about admiring the problem. I think that we need more books, like yours sounds like, and I can't wait to read it, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that really takes on what are the solutions. And here, you know, people say to me sometimes, yeah, you know, you're right, Admiral, it's a war of ideas. And I always say, not quite right. It's actually a marketplace yes. of ideas. And our ideas have to compete in that marketplace. Yes. Um, talk a little about two or three of the solutions you're thinking about in the book of how we can compete in that marketplace of ideas. So one of the problems that people are looking at, certainly in our country, and I know that the audience that's watching today is global, mm -hmm. we tend to think of ISIS as the only extremist group out oh there. Oh my gosh, I do. And, <laughs> right, and it's, and it's a global threat that we're right, facing. Exactly. Um, and the groups that I'm dealing with mm -hmm. are groups that are Al-Qaeda and ISIS and Boko sure. and Shabab and, sure. and, and you look at those kinds of um, those kinds of groups and you know that the, the armies that they're trying to build come from mm -hmm. um, a Muslim demographic. Yeah, so when I look at solutions, I'm looking at Muslim youth, millennials under the age of 30, mm -hmm. and I'm hearing from them 
um, what's taking place in an offline space as well as an online space. Mm -hmm. We make the mistake of believing we just need a be better, slicker messaging yeah. war online, and yeah. that isn't the answer. Correct. You need a you need a strategy that's on and offline, mm -hmm. and we need a, a comprehensive strategy as a nation state that is both hard power and soft power yeah. combi combined. Yeah. So what kinds of things actually resonate with young people will mm -hmm. depend on where in the world you are. Mm -hmm. And it isn't just country to country, mm -hmm. but really it's community to community. Mm -hmm. So for some, um, for some as they think about this, it makes sense when you think about drawing or luring a young person in who believes uh, that, they are, that they are not quite sure about their identity. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to be modern and Muslim? Mm -hmm. um, what is this us and them narrative? Can I ever belong mm -hmm. is the sense that they are feeling. What appeals to them will come from their peers. Mm -hmm. So the solutions have to be extremely organic. Mm -hmm. They have to be extremely local. Mm -hmm. And they come in in different forms, but the influencers that come mm -hmm. forward are not the typical folks. Mm -hmm. We tend to think if the guy with the longest beard and the highest hat says something, mm -hmm. a young Muslim is going to believe them. Yeah. Actually, it's a lot of different yeah. kinds of people, yeah. you know? Not so, so much. yes. Well, it sounds like an absolutely terrific uh, book Thank and you. project, but what it really reflects is an absolutely terrific life Thank and you. career. So, thanks for joining us today. Thank it's you. great to have a chance to talk to Farah Pandit a wonderful graduate of the Fletcher School and my very good friend. Thanks so much. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you.